Part 2 Chapter 4 Timing, Targets, and Tools A pack of wolves is quickly seen as a threat, but the little fox comes in the night and takes what he wants. The friend saboteur cannot be micromanaged, nor is it reasonable to expect that simple sabotage can be precisely concentrated on specific types of targets, according to the requirements of concrete military timelines. The nature of the distributed operation requires setting the individuals free to act independently as self-starters through self-direction and trusting that such a structure will produce positive effects. Also, attempts to centrally control simple sabotage according to developing local factors could allow our enemies to anticipate the date and area of intensified or slackened subversive activity. By controlling media reports or news announcements, that would possibly affect the schemes of those central planners. Doing so could reveal information about a local group, which could in turn lead to an infiltration or trap. However, if each individual is encouraged to rely on his own knowledge and experience, he will be much more likely to take ownership of his art and develop it more fully. In this way, the individual is far more likely to have better instincts in regards to timing and target than some sabotage boss making decisions from a safe distance. In that sense, we can rely on Hayek's, quote, knowledge problem, unquote, to work in our favor if no sabotage central planner is directing an operation, and we can be equally comforted knowing that no state central planner can anticipate the actions of our distributed network. That is not to say suggestions across groups should be discouraged. Sabotage suggestions, of course, should be adapted to fit the area where they can be practiced. Target priorities for general types of situations likewise can be specified. For emphasis at the proper time by the underground press, friends networks, and cooperating propaganda. However, ultimately the individual friend saboteurs must be self-directed as they have the best first-hand knowledge of their targets and their environments. Part 2, Chapter 4, Section 1 Under General Conditions D&D-style simple sabotage is more than malicious mischief, and it should always consist of acts whose results will be detrimental to the materials, communications, security, morale, or manpower of our enemies. The saboteur should be ingenious in using his everyday equipment. All sorts of tools will present themselves if he looks at his surroundings in a different light. For example, emery flakes have incredible utility to the saboteur, but at first it may seem unobtainable. However, if the saboteur were to pulverize an emery knife sharpener or emery will with a hammer, he would find himself with a plentiful supply. Add it to a small hobby rock tumbler and set to tumble for a few days, and you have a highly effective powder that will destroy almost any moving part that has a bearing surface. Likewise, something like magnesium flakes may seem exotic, yet magnesium fire starter are readily available at camp supply stores and can be carefully filed to produce the highly flammable flakes. Please note, do not attempt to use a motorized grinder or vibrator polisher on a magnesium fire starter unless you want to destroy your work area and set yourself on fire. Obtaining German dark aluminum powder, a handy additive in fireworks, may seem dangerous to purchase. Even attempting to purchase aluminum powder may be enough to get you the wrong kind of attention and a visit from the people you really don't want visiting you. Yet, German dark aluminum powder can be easily produced with one tablespoon fish tank charcoal, a handful of half inch by three quarter inch steel ball bearings, and a five foot length of kitchen aluminum foil cut into one inch squares. Simply place the bearings, the charcoal, and some of the aluminum in a small hobby rock tumbler. Continue adding the aluminum foil a little at a time, and after a couple of days, they will grind into a fine powder. The steel bearings can be removed from the powder with a magnet, and there you have German dark aluminum powder. If you have it available, ceramic media may be a better choice than steel ball bearings because ceramic can't produce sparks. This is not as big of a concern when making German dark aluminum powder as when you are making something like thermite. Some people advocate the use of a kitchen blender, spice grinder, or sander bench grinder rather than a rock tumbler. The problem with the blender or grinder is that you will never get the consistency that a tumbler can produce, and you will likely destroy the blender. Also, the blender slash grinder method is violent and dusty and increases the risk of an unwanted fire. The same goes for vibrator polishers like the ones used in ammo loading. Please note, 
If it weren't already obvious, German dark aluminum powder is highly flammable, and thermite will liquefy solid steel while producing intense light that can damage unshielded eyes even a considerable distance away. Please be careful. The saboteur should never attack targets beyond his capacity or the capacity of his instruments. An inexperienced person should not, for example, attempt to use explosives or thermite, but should confine himself to the use of matches or other familiar tools. Explosives should rarely be encouraged, as the potential of injuring the innocent should always be a consideration in every operation. Unrelated to fire or explosives, but in regards to safety, a cable under tension, like the support cables of a communications tower, or any other cable under tension, can rebound with tremendous force when cut. Such a cable can move like a giant whip with enough force to cause unimaginable damage. For this reason, cutting support cables under tension should be strongly discouraged. The saboteur should try to damage only objects and materials known to be in use by our enemies or to be destined for eventual use by our enemy. Without special knowledge, it may be undesirable for him to attempt destruction of food crops, food products, or public water supplies. After all, governments do a fine job at polluting those things without our help. Although the friend saboteur may rarely have access to military or police objects, he should give his preference above all other targets, always keeping safety in mind. Part 2, Chapter 4, Dash 2 Immediately prior to a military or militarized police action. Prior to a military slash police offensive, during periods which are quiescent in a military sense, such emphasis as can be given to simple sabotage might well center on industrial parts production to distribute the flow of materials and equipment to our enemy. Slashing a rubber tire on a police SUV may be an act of value. Spoiling a batch of rubber in a production plant that is destined for a government tire contract is an act of still more value, while allowing standard tires to be mass-produced but with flaws that will cause more failures once installed may be the greatest value of the saboteur's investment. Now with understanding of this principle, the imagination of the individual industrial saboteur can take the idea beyond tires. Think about the array of computers and computer components in a modern police SUV. Each and every one of those components passes through hundreds of hands long before a cockroach touches it. GPS tracers and tracking devices placed on or in police vehicles could be helpful in many situations where friend operatives need to know police routines and habits. Also, it would be simple and inexpensive to modify an FM transmitter to constantly send a low-powered signal on a specific channel and permanently wire it into a police vehicle. Doing so would send an alert several blocks away when said vehicle approaches. The friend operative could simply keep an FM radio turned on and set to the same frequency, and whenever the police vehicle came into range, the radio would blare the warning. This would be very handy if attached to SWAT bands. Any communication facility which can be used by the authorities to transmit instructions or coordinate activities should be the object of simple sabotage. These include telephone, internet, power systems, radio, television, newspapers, and emergency broadcasting equipment, including and especially emergency communication towers. The friend saboteur should acquaint himself with the different types of communication towers and become familiar with the types used specifically for emergency and military communications. Many communication towers are powered by a simple power switch that, when thrown, essentially turns the tower off. Very often, these switches are on the ground level of the tower in a separate little building behind a simple door lock. Sometimes the switch is located on the side of the tower secured by a simple padlock. The friend saboteur should learn the locations of these towers and, during non-emergency conditions, determine the security weaknesses and strengths of these facilities through extensive reconnaissance and learn the weaknesses of the facility before the emergency arrives, so that at the right moment a strike can be made against the facility when it is needed the most by the authorities. Part 2, Chapter 4-3 During a Military or Militarized Police Action 
the most significant sabotage for an area which is or is soon destined to be a theater of combat operations or concentrated police action is that which effects will be direct and immediate. Even if the effects are relatively minor or localized, this type of sabotage is to be preferred to activities whose effects, while widespread, are indirect and delayed. The saboteur should be encouraged to strike transportation facilities and equipment, and communications equipment. Among such items are fueling stations, roads, automobiles, trucks, armored transports, police bicycles, and anything else used to transport state aggressors to the scene of their crimes, along with any form of communication they may use. Critical material infrastructures, valuable in themselves, or necessary to be the efficient functioning of transportation and communication of the authorities during emergencies, also should become targets for the friend saboteur. These may include oil supply lines, gasoline supply lines, natural gas supply lines, and sewer and water supply lines and treatment facilities. It may seem odd, but we have observed that authorities appear to understand the importance of protecting water supply facilities, but apparently they don't understand the vulnerability of their sewage treatment facilities. During the onset of a large militarized police action, a major failure of a sewage system on the other side of a city preferably including a large sewage spill, has the potential of disrupting and distracting the police action.